jump right into it. You know, you've heard a little bit about my history and, and what brought me to Looker. Um, perhaps you could share a little bit about uh, why, you're, why, why you're at Looker. You know, um, so L Looker is uh, the culmination of uh, basically my, my, my life's work. Um, um, I think my whole career has been leading up to this. Uh, you know, I come from, um, I'm third generation of, of accountant or basically an economist family. My grandfather and my father. And, um, and I, in college, I studied computers and fell in love with computers, but, um, and, and particularly programming languages. And then in my, early in my career, I, I, I went to work at a place called Borland International uh, in Scotts Valley, California, where the best language developers in the world were all culminating to build things like Turbo Pascal and Prolog and, uh, and, and, and Turbo C and, and, and also databases like DBase and Paradox. And um, so I, I learned from the best there. It was, it was, it was like going get, getting a graduate degree. Um, and then uh, the internet happened. And um, I saw Mosaic, and I quit my job and decided I was going to go write, a, write tools to build applications for the web. And I built the first application server for the web, combining databases and languages, um, and ended up selling that to Netscape, or joining Netscape, um, and becoming an architect there. And that shipped as, um, that, that product that shipped as, uh, as Livewire. So, uh, um, so my career has been about databases and languages, which is what Looker is about, right? Um, and, um, um, and then after that, I, was, uh, I taught school for a while, and then I, um, um, and, uh, I was CTO of a bunch of different companies. And as, uh, as CTO, um, um, you know, there are different kinds of CTOs. Some CTOs are, are DevOps CTOs, and some CTOs are I was a, like an economist CTO. I would like try to figure out what was happening with data. So um, I was at, at uh, ground zero at, uh, at a company called LiveOps, which was the first uh, gig work company, first crowdsource company. Mm. And we um, had 30,000 home-based telephone operators. And in order to be able to manage that, there was a huge data problem. How do you get um, people in the company to understand what's going on with these operators, right? And so I built tools that were specific around calls so that people could understand what was going on in the data. And it was real time. It was, it was important to know what was going on in the calls right now, because if there was an outage, you needed to be able to see what was happening with call data. And, and so this stuff worked off databases. And then I was the CTO of another company, which was a, um, a, uh, um, uh, an ad tech company. And we had to see what was happening with the ad data in real time and you know, understand what was going on in historical data with, with ad tech to figure out what was working and what was not. And, so I built tools so that everybody could see what was going on in data. Yeah, so, so you have, I guess, developed a very, very different perspective over, over time about how data should be accessed. I mean, yeah, so, um, you know, there's there, uh, uh, data basically, I was walking around the conference and somebody really smart said to me yesterday that um, data has a past, present, and future. And I realized like, oh, wow, that's really interesting. So Looker was born out of data present, right? It was, it was designed specifically so that people could understand what was happening right now with the data. Mm. And then we've, um, and then we've, as big analytical databases came along, we figured out how to hook it up to data past. And we've also, with, through our platform, are hooking it up to data future, mm. right, which is predictive analytics. So um, for data present, the important thing is that you get, you're able to understand what's happening right now, and the freshness of data really counts. For data past, it's the completeness of data, how big it is, and what, what you can combine. And data future is, is the data correct? Do you have, the, do you have it um, defined well enough so that you, you know that you can predict from um, higher level concepts. And so look, look very cool. So, I mean, it, it sounds like you, I don't know if you came up with that philosophy or, or <laughs> it was given to you, but it's, it sounds like you, you founded Looker on a, a kind of fundamental bets around the nature of databases and, and how they're going to exist in the future. So I suppose looking forward, what are the, the, the next bets? What, what do you see happening? You know, um, so, uh, so Looker, um, Looker's always been a platform, right? And, um, in, in, in order to be able to access data well, what you have to be able to do is, is have, a, have a, this data surface that we described, which is that you have, you have vetted data that, that works at any level of aggregation. So you, you, you should just be able to think about business terms and, and the terms that you think about your business in, whether it's mm. past, present, or future data, pull it, and then be able to act on it. So human beings can act on it, and, uh, but, but also to be able to build applications that work on it. So... Um, 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 the, the, the future is, ba is basically giving good data surface, giving ga data interfaces to people in the way that they need them. So, um, you know, one thing that I, uh, I've always thought about is that um, 
there, the number of people who look at a data at, an, at, a, at a user interface, the complexity of that interface is inversely related. To, the, the quality of that interface is inversely related to the number of people who use it. <laughs> so if you've got an interface that two people use, it's pretty rudimentary. It's like Excel, or right, it, if it's one person, and if it's ten people, it could be. Per, you can train them how to use it, even if it's complex, right? And if, if a million people use it, it's got to be really smooth. Mm. And Looker has been really good at delivering you know, data to thousands of people where you can trade. But if you want to get data to millions of people, you have to be able to build much smoother interfaces. But the data underneath needs to, this, the requirements of the data are the same underneath. Yeah. And it's, it's about being able to build different interfaces. And, and so yeah, and, and, and how would you say, like, is Looker prepared to meet that challenge? Like, well, what, what makes uh, our product different and special? You know, um, wh what, what makes it special is that we, we handle data at a layer that doesn't require your knowledge of the mechanics underneath. So a good API hides complexity, right? A good, a good interface to something hides the complexity so that you can operate in, the, in, 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 a, in, in a higher level of abstraction. Mm -hmm. And what Looker does is it gives you the terms to operate. Um, the Looker platform gives you the terms, whether it's machine querying the data or it's you know, a, like a pricing engine or a human being who's wanting to figure out what's going on now or feeding something into machine learning or building an application or building query query engines, that level, the, the level of abstraction that the, the modeling layer gives you is, uh, is queryable always with just five parameters. It's the, the model, the view, the field, the filter, the sort. You can pull that data and do anything you'd like with it. And, um, and what we're doing, I feel like, is Looker's manifest destiny, is like being able to build to, to all the things that sit on top of it. You know, we've always been a platform, but now we're building out all the things that you can sit that sit on top of it. Yeah. And I think it's pretty wild. I think it's the, what we're where we're going is amazing. Yeah, I love that idea. The idea that you can connect the data to actions as well. So. Yes. Yeah. All right, Lloyd. So uh, I want to thank Lloyd for uh, the interview. Thank you. Great. Thanks. Thanks.